Hello, in this video, we're going to look at how to rotate your object or your character using either buttons or mouse drag. OK, so you, where we'll be able to click and drag in order to rotate the object. Uh, as usual, all of the steps on how to achieve this are available on this blog post. So we go step by step how to create all the widgets, what to do in order to get this done. And I'll just give you a demonstration of what it is that we're trying to build. So basically here we'll have our object and we'll have some buttons where you can click on these buttons in order to rotate it. Or uh, you'll be able to click on the mouse and just uh, drag it. OK, so now you'll be able to rotate your object on uh, mouse drag. So that's that's what we're looking to build. Uh, so the, the mouse implementation is relatively straightforward, pretty trivial, uh, but the mouse click, I didn't really see too many um, tips on how to do it. So that's why I'm creating this little video for it. And let's get straight to it. So the first thing that you'll need to do is basically modify your uh, game mode, your character control and the HUD. Uh, so this is because by default, your mouse will be sort of disabled. So you're, you're not going to see your um, cursor and your input for movement will be enabled. So on, on this screen, it's like a character selection screen or whichever you, you want to have your mouse enabled. So that's why you'll want to modify the character controller. So uh, in order to create one, right, like you just click uh, right click blueprint and uh, you can search for character controller. Uh, I think it's player controller. Yeah, um, yeah player controller. And you'll want to effectively enable all of these uh, mouse interface uh, things. So uh, that's the first thing. And you'll also want to dis uh, disable the input. So uh, this is to basically prevent your camera from moving. But to be fair, maybe you'll want that. So, uh, you know, like block it if you need to. Otherwise, leave it as uh, it is by default. And what you'll want to do is either assi assign this directly inside the world settings or you can create a game mode where you will control all of these things. So for example, again, you, you right click, uh, add a new blueprint class. You can search for game mode here. So uh, it's this guy over there. And inside your game mode, basically just assign the player controller class that we've just created. If you're going to be using the button implementation, you'll want to also create a HUD and you'll also want to link it over here. So in the exact same way, right click, uh, blueprint class, search for HUD uh, and create a new class. And inside the HUD is basically where we will create the widgets and assign them to the viewport. So uh, once you've created the widget, just uh, inside your HUD, you can do create widget just to uh, assign the class that you want and make sure you add it to viewport. OK, so let's look at the widgets that we're working with. So usually I'd say don't focus on aesthetics inside like these uh, videos because, you know, like everyone will have their own designs for buttons. So what we tend to focus on is the implementation of blueprints. Uh, so in this case, for example, just add a button. Don't worry about what it will look like uh, because the main things that you want to do is uh, handle the on clicked events. OK, so uh, once you've added the button, uh, select the button, click on pressed and on released. And this will create you these events for um, you know, implementing the blueprints for it. And what we want to do is basically introduce a new variable called uh, rotate character and it's a blueprint, call it whatever you like. Um, but ultimately, uh, we just want to enable and disable it. So for example, when you press to rotate the button, uh, you'll enable the, uh, the Boolean and you'll also call these custom events. So in order to create a, a new custom event, just right click, add custom event, give it the name that you like, and you can implement some functionality. So you can see here is where we uh, utilize the, uh, the Boolean because we basically just have an infinite loop here while uh, this Boolean is active. So all we do is uh, while it's active, we just keep rotating the, um, the Z uh, angle. So basically add actor local rotation. Uh, and we uh, basically rotate it by four degrees every 0.01 seconds. So in order to control the sensitivity, you can either control this delay here or this um, angle here. So for example, if I click this now, you can see it's moving relatively fast. I can change this to a two and now it will be twice as slow, right? So that's how you can uh, modify this. 
uh, in order to get the reference for your object. So I created this object inside here. So uh, it's also here. Uh, there's a function to spawn it. So spawn actor from class. And this will pro provide you the reference to the object. So that's one way of doing it. Um, you can also get actor of class as well. So uh, you can find the active actors like that as well. Uh, so that's how uh, you basically get the reference. And I've also assigned it to a local variable. So that's how you can uh, basically get that. And that's basically it. So you can see whenever uh, this event is called, we simply add rotation, and then we uh, simply keep looping uh, until we've uh, released the button where we will disable this uh, Boolean. Okay, so uh, as soon as it's disabled, it just ends. Okay, so that's how we would do it with the button press. And uh, the next thing to do is to look at how we can uh, do it with uh, the mouse drag. So again, like I'll demonstrate. So when you click, you can move the uh, mouse um, along the x-axis. Uh, and when you release, it starts to slow down on its own. Okay, so uh, in order to do this, uh, we go into the, um, so the skeletal mesh for the object. So in my case, it's uh, the character. And what you'll need to do is, I create, uh, I added a, a new component here, which is a cylinder component should be under basic object. So it's this one over here. And we should be able to find it over here, right? So if I just uh, make it visible again, you can see this pretty large uh, component, right? And uh, let's see, by default, for example, it's just uh, one, one, one. So let's uh, again, just make it visible. So uh, the reason why uh, you want it to be large because that's the that's the object which will sort of receive the uh, mouse events for your drag. So you want it to be as big as you want the sensitivity to be. So if I just uh, leave it visible and put it back to 442, if I click play, you can see that it's taken up the entire screen, right? So this means that uh, anywhere I click here, I'm going to be capturing my event. So that's why I also disable the visibility so that it's obviously not impacting the appearance, but that's uh, that's capturing the sensitivity for uh, your events. And what we do is uh, with your cylinder selected, just create these events for on clicked and on released. Now, if there is danger essentially that like your cylinder ends uh, inside the screen. So uh, basically like the on released event is only captured if you release the mouse while still on the cylinder. So that should always happen in in my case. But if, for instance, it doesn't, you might need to uh, have this on end cursor event as well. So basically, as soon as your mouse uh, extends past the cylinder, you will also disable the dragging. Okay. So in a very similar way, you will uh, add a new Boolean for is dragging. So this is just capturing whether your mouse is still clicked and dragging. And on release of the mouse, you'll also disable the dragging. Um, and every time you click, you enable the dragging. Okay, so uh, on every tick, we're going to be creating, or rather, we're going to be executing these two functions. So we're going to have a look at what they do. So handle drag event, uh, this is basically handling every time you're uh, dragging the mouse. And what, what it is that we're trying to do is evaluate uh, the X coordinate that was moved by your, your mouse. So that's what we're capturing here. And we're setting this drag sum X uh, event. Now, we basically want to find out the velocity that we want to rotate your object. Uh, so this is happening over here. And uh, we basically multiply it by the delta seconds. And uh, this times 90 is just affecting the sensitivity of this. So you can see right now it's fairly sensitive, right? So if I click it like this, you can see it's going fairly quick. Uh, I can change this to, let's just put it to 30. Uh, it'll be much less sensitive. It's still fairly sensitive, but uh, let's just put 10. So you can see it's much less now, right? 
so basically play around with the sensitivity as you like, uh, but this evaluates the velocity that we wish to rotate the object at. So you can see we set this variable for velocity and uh, we handle the actual rotation in a, uh, another custom event. And uh, we basically multiply the velocity by the delta seconds and just add the world rotation to the object. So right now we've got self-selected because we're inside the skeleton mesh actor. And um, the final thing that we do is basically uh, add a little bit of decay to that rotation as well. So once you've uh, rotated it, uh, you want it to naturally slow down on its own. And we only do that if it's like basically larger than zero. So if, if it is rotating, just like uh, make it rotate less. And this happens on every frame. So uh, we basically reduce the velocity by 5% each frame. So that's what this does. Uh, so you can see that it's uh, multiplying it by 0.95. And we do that for both the velocity itself and the drag as well. Because otherwise, if you just keep clicking, you moved your mouse and you, you just hold it uh, constant there, it will keep uh, adding a lot of um, velocity to it, essentially, right? Uh, and that's basically it from here. Uh, the one addition that I had to make is inside uh, the component that spawned uh, the actor class. Uh, let me just make sure, yeah, it's this one. I also had to um, add one little thing which is uh, enable input. So you can see that I spawned my character here. I'll just show you, I spawned the character there. Uh, I've set the, uh, the variable locally. I also had to enable the input. So I needed to enable the input, otherwise uh, this blueprint would not be capturing these um, uh, click events. So that's the only uh, other addition that I had to do in order to get that working. And there you go. So that should um, basically make this work. So good luck. Right.